Hello everyone, my name is Valeria Gonzalez. And I'm David Lima. And today we're going to talk to you guys about technical exposure logs. So as a radiologic technologist, you must become familiar with the X-ray control booth. The X-ray control booth is like a digital camera which consists of factors that help adjust and produce an ideal image. Hey Father, look, let's take a picture. Sure, make sure that you focus so we can get a clear image. Okay, yeah. So the X-ray control booth consists of four factors. Here we have the MA selector, which controls the flow of electrons inside the X-ray tube. And then here is the exposure time, which is the amount of time in seconds that the X-ray photons reach to the image receptor. So here the MA selector times the exposure time gives us the MAS, which is the amount of X-ray photons that are produced and it determines the darkness. Here in, on this side, we have the KVP, which controls the energy and penetrability. Today I will be discussing the four technical exposure laws, which are the inverse square law, the direct square law, the reciprocity law, and the 15% rule. And I will be explaining the differences between high and low contrast, the factors that affect and control contrast, and lastly how factors influence the differences between over and under exposure and over and under penetration. You must keep in mind that the distance between the source of radiation and the image receptor affects the intensity of the x-ray beam. Having that said, the inverse square law states that the intensity of the beam is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. So for example, we have intensity 1, which is equal to 0 0.8 MAS with a, dis with a distance of 40 inches SID. We have an unknown intensity with a second distance at 71 inches SID. So we go ahead and plug in the factors into the formula. So we have your first intensity over the second unknown intensity equaling to your second distance over your first distance. We go ahead and we square this. In order to isolate your second intensity, you have to multiply your first intensity times your first distance divided by your second intensity. This is gonna go ahead and equal 0 0.25 MAS. So from this, we can go ahead and determine that when you increase your distance, your intensity will decrease and vice versa. So if you decrease your distance, then you will, your intensity will increase. So deriving from your inverse square law, we have the direct square law. So here you can see that your first intensity is the same, 0 0.8 MAS, an unknown intensity with your first distance at 40 inches and your second distance at 71 inches. We go ahead and we plug it into the formula and as you've noticed, this is inverse, so now you have your distance one on top and your distance two at the bottom. We go ahead and we do the same thing. We go ahead and square, and in order to solve and isolate your, your second intensity, you go ahead and you multiply your first intensity by your second distance divided by your first distance. You go ahead and you have 2.5 MAS. As a radiographer, the direct square law becomes helpful to us because it helps us calculate the necessary adjustment in MAS from an adjustment in SID in order to maintain optical density. So let's go ahead and apply the formula and the calculations to an actual image. So our first intensity was 0 0.8 MAS with an SID of 40 inches. As you can see, this is the image that we obtained. Now when we apply the direct square law, we got that our, mat, our MAS changed to 2.5 at a distance of 71 inches SID. And as you can see, they're very similar images. Our following law is reciprocity law. This law states that any density produced on a radiograph can use any combination of MA and time as long as the product is equal to the MAS. So here we have the formula. So MA times time equals MAS. So for example, a radiographer takes an initial radiograph using the technical factors 100 MA at one second. There is involuntary motion on the radiograph, but he wants to maintain the same density. So what new MA will he use at this time in order to give him the same MAS? So we go ahead and calculate first. 100 MA times one second will give you 100 MAS. So that means he needs to find an MA that's going to give him the same exact MAS with this time. So we go ahead and we isolate the MA and we go ahead and we do 100 MAS over 1 times 2 over 1. That's going to go ahead and give you 200 MA. So
So 200 MA, we plug it into the formula, 200 MA times half a second is going to give you 100. As you can see, the combination of these two technical factors are going to give you the same MAS you initially started with. So now I'll be talking about the 15% rule, which states that if you're changing your KVP by 15%, it will affect the radiographic density by either doubling the MAS or reducing your MAS by 50%. So for example, if they're asking you to increase your density, you will increase your KVP by 15% and your MAS will remain the same. Or you can keep the same KVP and double your MAS and vice versa if they're asking you for a decrease in density. Now, in order to maintain density, if you're trying to increase your KVP by 50%, you must decrease your MAS by 50%. Or if they're asking you to decrease your density, you must decrease the KVP by 15% and double your MAS. So for example, if you're trying to increase the double optical density for these factors, 70 KVP and 5 MAS, you would go ahead and take and multiply 15% to 70, it will give you 10, and that 10 you're going to go ahead and add it to your 70 to get your new KVP, which is 80. So you'll get 80 KVP but keep the same MAS. Or you could double your MAS, which in this case would give you 10, and you would keep the same KVP with your new MAS. So for example, when trying to maintain optical density for these factors, we'll go ahead and start by multiplying 15% to the 95, which will go ahead and give you 14. We'll go ahead and add 95 and 14 to give you your new KVP, and then reduce the MAS by 50%, which would give you four. So your new KVP and MAS would be 109 KVP and four MAS. Or you can go ahead and subtract 15% to the 95, which would give you 81, or double your MAS, which would give you 16. So your new KVP would be 81 and 16 MAS. These three combinations of factors will go ahead and give you similar densities. Let's start off with high contrast. When we have high contrast, it decreases our KVP, which means less penetration through the x-ray beam. When we have an increase in the OID, which is the distance between object, the object and the image receptor, it will give us high contrast. It increases the contrast, which leads to short scale contrast, giving us an image that is in black and white. Photoelectric absorption is the interaction that uses high contrast. Extremities is an example of when we use high contrast because it's where the less dense tissues are located in the body. However, low contrast is the opposite of high contrast because there is an increase in KVP, meaning more penetration through the x-ray beam. When we decrease the OID, it gives us a low contrast. There is a decrease in contrast that leads to a long scale contrast, which produces an image that is also black and white, just like the high contrast, but with more shades of gray. Compton is an interaction that uses low contrast, and the abdomen is an example of when we use low contrast because it needs more penetration to pass through the organs and tissue. A penetrometer, as you can see here, produces uniform range of densities on an image receptor. It shows an effectiveness of KVP on contrast and shows differential absorption of tissues. Here on the thicker portion of the penetrometer, it has more absorption and produces lighter images. On the thinner portion, it has less absorption and produces darker images. So as we can see here on the x-ray image, on this side we have high contrast, which is also known as a short scale contrast, and produces images black and white. It has a greater difference, difference in adjacent densities. On this side we have low contrast, which is also known as a long scale contrast. It produces images with more shades of gray and it has a minimal difference of adjacent density. Contrast is controlled and influenced by two of our main technical factors on the x-ray control group. The controlling factor of contrast is KVP and if increased, it will produce a wider range of photon energies. For instance, if you increase KVP, contrast will decrease and vice versa. If you decrease KVP, contrast will increase. The factor that influences contrast is MAS, and MAS alters the image receptor exposure and film density of an image, which will affect our ability to visualize contrast. Other influencing factors include focal spot, anode heel effect, 
distance, filtration, grids, and many more. When an image is overexposed, the image is exposed for a longer time than normal. And when the image is underexposed, the image is exposed for a shorter time than normal. Here we have the original image that shows an elbow with a 48 kbp and a 1.7 max. Up here we have the image produced with a 48 kbp and increasing the mas at 5.0 and showing how it's overexposed. On this side, the image is underexposed when we use the kbp, the same at 48 and decreasing the MAS at 0. If you have an image that is over or under penetrated, it signifies that there is more or less energy being penetrated through the image receptor. An example of an optimal image of the elbow using 48 kvp and 1.7 MAS. Applying the 15% rule, when you add 15% to the kvp and maintain the same MAS, we get an over penetrated image. And when we subtract 15%, to the KVP and maintain the same MAS, we get an underpenetrated image. So here as an example, we used 56 KVP and maintained the same MAS at 1.7 and gave us a darker image than the original. And here we subtracted the 15% and gave us 41 KVP and maintained the same MAS at 1.7 and gave us a lighter image than the original. To conclude, Today I went over four technical exposures law, which were the inverse square law, the direct square law, the reciprocity law, and the 15% rule, and how we can apply these laws to a radiographic production. These laws take action in providing the exact number needed for a specific radiographic procedure. And I explained about how you can differentiate high and low contrast in radiographic images and how technical factors such as KVP and MAS influence or control the results of images. These factors can also affect the way an image can become over and under exposure and over and under penetrated. We hope to have educated our future radiologic technologists to become familiar with the technical exposure laws and factors in order to produce ideal images.